rest in a fallen world. If rest was of value before the fall, the sin of man, permeating man and his entire being, rest would certainly be of great or even greater value in a world of thorns and sweat and child labor and heartache and infiltration of sin in the human being and the human society. More than ever we need rest now that we dwell in a fallen world and God in his insight before the fall established this day of rest because we would need it. And Lois, if you'll read again here from Genesis chapter 3 verses 17 through 19 after the fall. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. <clears throat> it, will, it will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return." Again, Abraham Heschel has spoken very appropriately. He uses the illustration of an island, an island which is like the seventh day, a day of rest, a day of detachment from things, from instruments and practical affairs, as well as of attachment to the spirit. Imagine that we were all out uh, swimming and every day our work was to swim, to tread water, to stay afloat, and it'd be hard work. And we'd learn various uh, strokes, uh, the front crawl, uh, as we swam in the water all together. This was our work, our labor. And it'd be tiresome so we'd learn how to float on our back, swim on our side. And day after day this would happen. But there was an island that would appear on the seventh day. After six days of swimming and our skin would be wrinkled and we'd be very tired, wore out from every day swimming, staying afloat for survival. So some saw the island and they would say, let's go on the island for a day. And they would go on the island and stay and they would rest and they would talk, they would sleep, uh, they would have uh, picnic lunches together, they would enjoy their time on the island. And then they'd go back in the water but they would go back more refreshed. And for a few days after the island experience, which would be like a Sabbath, they would talk about the wonderful times they had on that day and how restful and how they fellowshiped, how it is and how it strengthened them and how good life is, especially when you can pause and not have to swim and beat the water and find various strokes to survive. And so toward the end of the week they would again feel weary and wanting that island experience. And so after the first few days of the island experience. Then after that they would begin to think and anticipate, oh, I just can't wait till we have that break. Have that time when we again rest in the sand and we can run on the earth and we can play and we can laugh and we can sing and have a good time together. And so we look forward to that time. And so week after week they were able to su survive able to thrive because the island appeared and they rested apart from the six days of constant labor of swimming. But there were some who said, no, I can't afford to go on that island. I must stay working. I'll fall behind. I will lose my pace. I'll forget how to swim. I'll forget how to work if I pause and take that time away from my labor at the sea. Others would enjoy, they'd be happy, but those who stayed in the water became ever so weary. No, I, I'm afraid to go on the island. I'm afraid. Maybe I won't be able to swim. Maybe I'll fall behind in my work. Others will get ahead of me. Until finally those who refused to take the island eventually fade away, one by one, disappear into the water because they're so weary. They're so tired out. And they are, it's so monotonous, day after day, the same thing. Their skin would be wrinkled and eventually fade and fall and sink to the bottom of the sea. How sad 
to think that God offers rest, an island of rest weekly. But some of us think that we'll disappoint God if we take that rest. We think that we must work seven days in a row, 24-7, always, constantly. And we have failed to see that God has given us rest, a time to pause and make our work bearable. Even if we enjoy it, it becomes too much for us to bear if we don't make use of the island, the holy segment of time which he has called Sabbath. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.